howdy doody, welcome back to Jay Mick. My name is Jack, the snack that smiles back. You're here to listen to some stories on the internet, so here you go. I, a 25-year-old female, may have unintentionally taken advantage of my fiancé, a 39-year-old male, whilst he was grieving, and our whole relationship may not be what I thought it was. So, this is a throwaway, for obvious reasons, I would have thought. I really need some advice as I've got myself into a bit of a mess. I kinda think I need to go into the history a bit to fully explain it. Sorry, it's long. Oh, but it is so worth it. So, going back to 2013, when I was 17, I had a work placement at a local preschool nursery. I've always wanted to work with children. I've always been quite maternal, I think. However, what turned out to be an issue was that I've always had a thing for older men. I was the girl in school who always had a crush on the teachers, or my friend's dads. So much so, I even started dating a boy in school, mostly because I had a huge crush on his dad. Shortly after starting there, I developed a really strong attraction to one of the dads, John. Not real name, obviously. John was always chatty and friendly. He often did the pickup in the afternoon before he started work. He works late shifts. In hindsight, I realized he was just friendly with everyone, but as a very smitten girl, I used to imagine that he was so friendly to me because he liked me. We did have a lot of similar interests, so conversations were very easy for us. I lusted over him for a long time, but just tried to act professional and repress it. A few of my colleagues picked up and used to tease me a bit, but I just tried to ignore it. Just under two years later, a few months before his boy was due to leave for primary school, John's wife was killed in a car accident. Okay, that's the yeah, others jumped a bit. John was hurt quite bad too, but survived. Obviously, this was a really horrible time for all who knew them. Uh -huh, yeah, but it was, Miss Saboteur. <laughs> no, I shouldn't accuse you of that, that's really dark. A couple months later, I happened to run into him outside the shop. He was waiting for a bus as he was unable to drive still at this point. I offered him a lift, which he accepted. We chatted a bit in the car and he explained how much he was struggling trying to be a single dad and manage his physio and recovery. As much as I still had a huge crush on him, I genuinely wanted to help and said I don't mind popping around and helping with his son. I'll call him James for the purpose of this post. Regardless of how I felt about John, James was genuinely one of my favorites that we had at the nursery, so getting to see him again would have been cool. Oh yeah, I bet James is the best. That's totally not influenced by your attraction to John. Nah, 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 James is he's perfect, yeah. He was reluctant, but admitted it would be helpful and agreed. I popped around once a fortnight, took James to the park, then to shop, and picked up a few bits for them to save John struggling. Obviously, this meant I spent more time with John. As such, we became good friends. Just under a year later, when John was well enough to return to work, he was told by his employer that he would still need to do a minimum of three late shifts a week, else they'd have to demote him to another role as it was a specific requirement. I offered to look after James on those evenings like a babysitter. I didn't ask to be paid for it, but John insisted, and every Tuesday and Thursday, I'd come around and look after James. John's mum did the other night. John and me obviously continued to grow closer, but I tried to be just a friend and not act on my attraction to him. I'm gonna come back to that later, the, the whole not acting on your attraction to someone. Yeah, okay. I enjoyed helping him, and I love spending time with James. The more time I spent with John, the more feelings I was catching for him that went beyond lust. I always thought John just saw me as a friend, a helper, and a babysitter, etc. I had kidded myself years before that he liked me, a childish fantasy, etc. It made it easier to never give in to my feelings by telling myself that's how he saw me. After doing this for just under a year, I thought about saying I couldn't do it anymore as it was torture, but I also couldn't bear the thought of not doing it or seeing him. I became a bit more confused about this around my 21st. My laptop had broken not long beforehand and I couldn't afford a replacement. John brought me a really nice expensive one for my birthday. I didn't really expect anything from him. The card with it said, Love John and James. Which, again, in hindsight, was probably him just being nice, and we were close after all. However, my brain reverted right back to silly girl with a crush at seeing those words, and my feelings for him were brought right to the surface. Things were then really hard for me working there. About a month after my birthday, the day after the third anniversary of his wife's death, I wasn't aware of this at the time, John asked if I'd come and look after James in the evening. I jumped at the opportunity to see him, as I always did. 
I got there and he said he'd be a few hours and went out. I played a few games with James and then put him to bed. I fell asleep watching the TV and woke up almost at midnight. I called John several times. I got no answer but heard the phone vibrating on the floor upstairs. I went up and found him sat there watching James sleeping with tears in his eyes. I asked if he was okay and he just broke down. I helped him to his feet as best as I could. He's a big man, I'm quite small, and then settled James again, reassuring him it was okay. I sat John down and I just hugged him, and we just held each other. I don't know how long we were actually like that, but it felt like it lasted for hours. As we finally broke off the hug, I lost my self-control and I kissed him. He pulled away suddenly, but then kissed me right back. I just told him it was okay, and we just cuddled and fell asleep on the sofa together. Uh, things were a little awkward in the morning. I had to leave in a bit of a hurry so I could get home, changed, and off to work. The evening was Tuesday though, and I had to look after James again. It was really awkward when John left for work. When he got back, it was late as usual, but I decided I had to clear the air and told John everything about how I felt for him and that I never meant to overstep like that. He admitted that he had developed feelings for me, but didn't act as if he felt it would be inappropriate. After much talk and a few days to think about it, we decided to go on an actual date. Things progressed from there and we've been together as a proper couple for almost four and a half years now. It's been amazing, better than I ever imagined. I've had an amazing relationship with James too. He sees me like a mum, although he's aware I'm not his mum. We get on really well. At the start of last month, John took me by complete surprise and proposed to me. I accepted in an instance. I love him so much, and I love the little family we've become. Everything seemed perfect up until last week, though. I had gone around to a friend of mine to have a bit of a catch-up. Her flatmate was there with a couple of her friends, and they were talking about things they'd watched recently. My friend and I ended up joining in a bit as her flatmate's friend was big into crime-related documentaries, dramatizations, etc., as is my friend. One of them started talking about something they'd watched a few years ago about a con man who stole a lot of money off a lot of women, all of them widows. He targeted widows who were grieving the loss of their husbands and essentially groomed them and ended up running off with their money. The moment she mentioned it, something became ingrained in my head. I can't help but feel I've unintentionally groomed John while he was grieving. I truly love him, but I can't bear the thought that he only has the feelings he has, or even thinks he has, because I essentially took advantage of his grief for my own benefit. I know I lusted after this man pretty much the moment I first laid my eyes on him. In my mind, I never intended to pursue anything romantic. I just wanted to help him, and I caught feelings in the process. Still, I never meant to act on them. Like, as if you're gonna be surprised you caught feelings for a guy who you socially find very charming as well as lust for. <laughs> Duh. I feel so uncomfortable around him at the moment as I feel with guilt every time I look at him. I need to talk to him about this, but I've got no idea how to even start this conversation. So yeah, a very long story, but uh, an interesting one, to say the least. Where does the peanut gallery stand at, though? You think, uh, I think she's an a-hole for doing this? I mean, you can argue that. She's young, she's 21, she's not exactly being very mature with her emotions nor her position of power in this moment. She basically jumped at him given the chance due to his grief. How is this no different to the con man story except just, you know, not running off with millions. But on the other side of things, it is a psychological thing where people do develop relationships through grief. And okay, yeah, let's say for instance that he did develop this through the grief that doesn't deny or invalidate the emotions he's feeling towards you. Like, you can argue whether or not him contracting them was legitimate, but you can't deny that he still has them. So I think the case of whether or not he is genuinely in love with you, no, he, he is. He's genuinely in love with you. He wouldn't propose to you otherwise. But again, where do you, dear listener, stand yourself? It's a young, energetic woman striving after an older, lonely, grieving man. How would you feel if we switched the genders? Not saying that's one of those kind of arguments to make, but eh, it's a curious thing to observe. Next story, am I the a-hole for asking my wife to quit her job after her boss tried to kiss her? So I am a 24 year old male, my wife is 25. She is my high school sweetheart. We've been together since we were 18 and went through uni together too. We married last year and overall everything is going really well. This year she started a job in a fashion store. 
it's her first job ever, and she really enjoys it there. So she frequently goes to after work dinners and drinks with her co-workers, most of which are male. I'm fine with that, of course. I fully trust her and know she would never want to cheat on me. Also, she always tells me everything and doesn't leave out details. I know all of her co-workers, including her boss. I've met them a few times before. So the other day, she tells me that after one of those evenings out with her co-workers, she was walking with her boss back to the store to pick up something at around 4am, and he tried to kiss her. She of course pulled away right away, I believe her, and she went home to tell me straight away. Of course, I am freaking out. I don't like this one bit. Her boss knows me. He knows we are married. So the next morning I gathered my thoughts and told her straight up that I would like her to quit her job. I don't feel comfortable with her working there anymore. She says I'm overreacting, she would never do anything with him, and she loves her job and enjoys getting paid, of course. I mean, she is not even considering looking for something else, like she really wants to stay there, but I feel super uncomfortable. She said she wouldn't go for drinks alone with her boss anymore, but honestly, that's not enough for me. Am I the a-hole for asking her to quit her job? People's thoughts. You're the a-hole. Her boss should be punished, not her. But it isn't normal for people to be out with their boss until 4am either. This sounds off. Oh, not the a-hole. There is a better chance of your wife leaving than the boss leaving. But 4am out with boss and co-workers is weird and suspicious. It's already too late, my dude. She be banging her boss and co-workers already. I don't want to jump on this accusation too much, but look, in my experience, <laughs> with a lot of my experience, high school sweethearts are like a one out of every... 3,000 million. You need to understand you are really, really lucky if neither of you cheat on each other for the next 10 years of your marriage. I don't know, like maybe maybe you in the comments have something of your own experiences, but like I've never seen a high school relationship last beyond high school and uni. The dating pool just expands for us all when we get older. It's just, you know, it's kind of not really that surprising that we want to explore. Soft everyone sucks here. Her boss is a huge a-hole. You're less of one. Obviously, this would be very startling news, and I don't blame you for reacting this way. However, instead of telling your wife to quit, you should work together to file a complaint. Because ultimately, if she leaves without saying anything, this will happen again, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did something against someone's will. Obviously, we should take into the fact that this is her first job, and she clearly really loves this job. There's also the unfair case of putting the blame on her and the responsibility on her when it's clearly the boss who's instigated this issue. We can theorize she's unfaithful, but that's not the evidence here right now. The evidence is that her, her boss has harassed her. Anyway, I'll leave that up to you in the comments. Next story, am I the a-hole for walking out of the surprise birthday party my family threw for me? I'm a 26-year-old female, and I've been married to my wheelchair-bound husband, Adam, for two years. His disability was a result of a major car accident shortly after we got back from our honeymoon. His injuries were too severe, and no one thought he was going to get better. My life certainly changed, because now I have tons of responsibilities, but I'm happy and blessed to still have him in my life. Before the accident, my family used to invite Adam to events and dinners and visit all the time, but not anymore. They don't see him much, but help out with our financial struggles. I've been told that being a caregiver is huge and unfair since I'm young. My mom tried to set me up with a guy named James, her friend's son, by inviting me to lunch with him or giving him my number in social media. I told her, it won't work, I love Adam and will care for him for the rest of my life if I had to. I put space between my family and said unless they stop bringing James, who was disrespectful towards Adam around me, I won't visit them. Mum apologized and I haven't seen James in months, which uh, was a relief. My birthday was days ago and I had to work that day but planned to celebrate with Adam in the evening. At 3pm, I got a phone call from my mum asking me to stop by once I get off work. I arrived at mom's house to find my entire family there setting up a surprise birthday party. I was thrilled! I didn't think they'd even pay for a party after already helping me with money. I asked if I could go bring Adam so we could celebrate together, but they stalled, saying my brother will bring him. But the door rang, and there was James. I was confused, and I asked what he was doing here. Mum said I should relax. She invited him and his mum. Oh, let's go, bro. Here we go. I remained calm and took the gift James brought after so much hesitation. I opened it, and there was some jewelry piece. He made a snide comment asking if Adam was ever able to afford such piece of jewelry. I closed the box and gave it back. 
They insisted I'd take it, but grabbed my bag and said I was leaving. Okay, I don't want to be that kind of person, but... Yas! Yas, girl! My mom said I should stay because the family, sisters, brother, aunt, nephew came together to do this for me. I told her it was rude of her to catch me off guard and invite James to the party. She and dad followed after I walked out, asking me to return, but I kept walking. Mom and aunt left messages saying it was disrespectful to walk out like that after the efforts they made to celebrate my birthday. They said I had plenty of time to celebrate with my husband, and I shouldn't have made a scene and embarrassed them in front of their friends. They said I screwed up and overreacted by being hostile towards those who were trying to be nice and take my mind off the stress. So am I the a-hole? I mean, it's obviously Natar. This is just almost like you're fishing for approval. But it's a nice fun reminder that at least our families aren't this difficult, I assume. I hope. Next story. Did he need medical attention or did I ruin his day? I fit in the Karen demographic and I keep reliving this event from a flight. Did I overstep proper boundaries or was it the right thing to do? Okay, this is a first fact. So we got a Karen who is self-aware. I was sitting near a man and his son on a boarded airplane. Not in flight, just sitting on the runway. The kid was around four or five and seemed excited to be on the plane. The dad was kind of young, 20 and 30s, and a person of color. Please, please tell me that is relevant to the story in any way. They were both talking with each other when they got on the plane. I was looking out their window as my seat partner had closed ours when I noticed that the kid couldn't wake his dad. It was just in passing at first, so I ignored it, thinking he was a heavy sleeper. The kid didn't seem too worried at that point either. The kid tried to get his attention a couple more times intermittently, getting louder each time and shaking his arm too but there's no response from his dad. I'm starting to think, is he really a heavy sleeper or did he take something to help him sleep? Maybe, or is there something wrong? The kid tries again. He seems more worried this time. Now, because the kid is trying to wake him up by shaking his side, his dad slumped forward in his seat like I've never seen an alive person do before. I'm looking around to see if anyone else notices. I look at him and can't tell if he's breathing. His hands and whole body are limp and he slumped over forward. I decide, oh crud, I need to do something. He looks like he may not even have a pulse. Another passenger behind me asks, is that man all right? We signal for a flight attendant and try to get the man's attention. The flight attendant can't get the man's attention. His son says, he's just sleeping. It almost seems like he might not be worried about it anymore. Like this is a normal thing for his dad. Meanwhile, the flight attendant asks for a medic. A guy jumps up and starts shaking the man and yelling pretty loudly to get a response. It takes close to a minute of this for the man to come around. He's pretty disoriented, saying something about making his flight and that they're on their way to this place. As they try to get him caught up on what's happened, he starts to get irritated. I mean, understandable, strangers were yelling at him on the plane. He insists he's just tired and has been sleeping and has just been exhausted lately. Medical services come from the airport to examine him. They ask him about meds, about here, I remember not to be an a-hole and put loud headphones in to try to give more privacy. He refuses an ambulance. They do tell him his vitals are good, but he's escorted off the plane with his son. He's pretty ticked off, which I get. He ends up leaving pretty peacefully, but he does exclaim, I guess you can't sleep on a frickin' airplane anymore. My actions were definitely out of concern for his health, but is there something else I should have done? I feel like I completely fricked up his day, but I'm glad he's okay. Was there a better way to handle it before involving flight attendants? Now, I don't know about anyone else's experience when it comes to sleeping people, but like, I, this comment says it. It's not normal to sleep so heavily that it takes multiple people to physically wake you. Like, you chose to err on the side of caution and alerted the staff. Everything that happened from that point on was out of your hands, so you can't be the a-hole for that. I mean, I really have to question why they even decided to escort him off in the first place. Why did they need to? Maybe that's why they relate to this of them being a person of color. Is this meant to be a racial profiling thing? I, I don't know. Hello, hi, you've made it to the end of the video. Welcome, I've been waiting so eagerly to see you once again. I love that you've made it here. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. If you have the chance to give this video a like, I would absolutely love you for it. Seriously, I would love you for it. Like this video, do it. <laughs> give it to me. I do like to make this channel a conversation between us all, so any other little thoughts or opinions you have, things that might be totally against what I was saying, please let me know down below. I'm 
I'm just one voice. I'm not the genius of everything. Anyway, my name's been Jack. You have been a lovely person to ramble at today. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.